and hands up the Cox and the Shrewsbury boat. Obviously not quite happy with the alignment. Both the crews now all at front stops waiting for the umpire's order. And still up and down. But let's just listen to the sound of these eight starting once they come under the umpire's order. Cleanly off the first stroke, who's really jumped off at the same sort of time. And clearly moving into the maximum speed and look here, see when the puddles clear, when they always clear the puddles off the start, that shows you they're getting to some sort of maximum speed. Yeah, you can see why they're called puddles, can't you? You want to get out of trouble and put your oar into the clear water. Wow, really strong, determined faces on the Shrewsbury young women there. And uh, well, they've both got really clean start and we're coming on to the wider section of the course here. We're riding now with the Dolphin and, and Latimer. And uh, yeah, also really focused, really strong, really determined racing there. You've got to be careful not to do too much too soon in these races. It's 2,112 metres and uh, well, you don't want to carry too much lactate in those legs. It's a really tricky balance between super aggressive and make sure you're, you're in the race because you can't win the race at the start, but you can lose it if you don't, if you lose contact. And here you now you're starting to see a little bit of more time there as they're sliding, as the boat runs a bit further, trying to transition into their rhythm. And good blade work here as they're coming on down, just coming up probably to the quarter mile. Yeah, looking back down the course, you can see Bodicea, a fittingly named umpire's launch for this race. And uh, you've got on the back of the boat the colourful blazers and the stewards who are running the race, making sure everything's in order. And umpire Fiona Dennis, a little bit of steering there, I think, from the Shrewsbury crew, Cara Hundemark, 16 years old. Uh, who won a bronze medal at the national schools but you can see uh, the umpire i think it's fiona dennis umpiring this from what i can see is warning actually godolphin and latimer to stay away from the center line beautiful shot we can see the umpire's lawn should be cutting straight down the middle of the course yeah the crews should have there should be clear water between the puddles on each side from both crews and you can see here the, the puddles are actually messing with each other the crews are far too close together but it looks like godolphin have moved over and given themselves some space yeah, that's some nice umpiring by uh, Fiona Dennis. You don't want to make the crews nervous, but she's giving them clear warning and just that vertical flag saying just stay apart, Coxes. Um, now, of course, the Coxes can't see the umpire, so the stroke will typically have to relay that and say we're being warned, just stay apart. And also they can't hear it with the noise of the clashing of all the blades in the water and they can't hear the umpire very easily. So the, the, the stroke girl has to actually be very clear in communicating. So very competitive racing. It's Godolphin and Latimer School on the left of our picture and Shrewsbury School on the right. And uh, this is the Prince Philip Challenge Trophy. A bit of steering required on both sides. The Coxes are struggling a little bit, really, to hold their, their line. You should be seeing pretty even pressure with four, four oars on both sides. The, the crew, on average, should be pretty straight. Yeah, exactly. And, here, and none of these, neither of these crews rode at national schools in July. I mean, in May, sorry. The, the Godolphin Latimer crew were broken up into some fours, a J16 four, a Coxes pair, and a Cox four. And they got silver in that Cox four, whereas the Shrewsbury girls, four of them were in the Cox four, they got bronze. So in the fours at national schools, Godolphin got the better of Shrewsbury, but now they've brought some crews together with some J16s to come and race at the regatta. And so many of these junior women's events, whether it's the eights or the quads, have produced some really, really good tight racing, having they, um, fairly recently introduced these events. We had a record entry from women into this Henley regatta, which is fantastic to see. And uh, everybody wants to be racing here with the legends of rowing at all levels. Godolphin and Latimer have got the edge, I think. The Cox there looks across. That is um, Charlotte Long, 17 years old in the Godolphin Latimer Potsdam seat, just looks across to their opposition to take a measure of where they are and give her through a bit of instruction on what sort of pace they want to be setting now. And I guess the difficult thing now is that the boats are pretty much the same speed as they go through their rhythm here, and you have to make a decision. Like, there's still quite a long way to go. Do you do a big effort and try and take some sort of psychological advantage, or do you just trust your rhythm and wait till the other crew tires a bit and then pounce? Yeah. It's, it's a difficult a call to make. It's a cracking race here, and that's a difficult decision to make because you could just keep battling and keep pushing and try and break the other crew, but the more you do that, the more expensive it is, or you try to consolidate be a bit more efficient and save a little bit of powder for later in the course as long as you're staying on terms this is neck and neck yes, and you look at both these crews you can see both of them quite young crews at the front their blades just hanging a little bit in the air and they're missing a little bit of water and if the crews or any of them could just decide to put their blade in and have less of a pause yeah. they, they, they would pick the boat up a bit earlier and just start to move away so i'm just wondering as you look at that adrian the, what you were just saying there can we see the godolphin uh, young women there looking just a little bit more dynamic on the front end potentially than the shrewsbury crew but i see exactly what you mean you really want to maximize the effective length of the, of the stroke and it's one of those things if you get that bit right it's part of the recovery so it doesn't take any effort it's just looseness just to cover the blade at the end of the recovery and that means you pick the boat up a fraction of a second earlier it means you get all the pressure earlier and you just 
delivers a bit more speed. But here Shrewsbury seems to be slowly moving out, just maybe a canvas, just under a canvas lead coming here as we go past the Upper Thames Rowing Club. This is the point of the race where decisive moves tend to be made. So Shrewsbury got maybe a canvas, maybe half a canvas here. It really is um, everything and nothing for both of these crews now. So they've got to make a call. Are they going to be able to take a decisive push and get a couple of seats? It looks to me like Godolphin and Latimer are starting to try and push on the, the rate of strokes goes up a bit. They're not, that move has not affected the Godolphin crew psychologically at all. They're just maintaining what they're doing. They've probably tried to absorb the push that Shrewsbury have done. And now they're going to have to decide whether are we going to attack back now and just just get rid of that advantage that Shrewsbury managed to achieve. And here the girls still really attacking this. It's really impressive the, how aggressive these girls are still racing after five and a bit minutes in the water. Yeah, this is really the hardest type of racing. You're alongside and you're not moving on the other crew and they're not moving on you, so it's really tough. Then what can you do differently to make a change in the race? You can stick up the number of strokes per minute, but that's very, very expensive. You can keep the same stroke rate, but push harder with the legs. That's also expensive. How do you call it? And also sometimes it's a matter of not losing speed. Sometimes it's like who out of the 16 girls who are rowing, which the one of them is, is given up first? And if one of them gives up, that makes a difference for that crew. And it's, it could be a matter of not going faster, but making sure you don't go slower. And you put your finger on one of the essential ingredients of this sport, the trust you have to have in your teammate that comes through training together. It's still absolutely neck and neck, seat for seat. This is perhaps one of the closest races we've seen on the day. Godolphin and Latimer there, Ella Pierce in the bow seat, only 16 years old. And, uh, well, she's sitting uh, right there at the front of the crew. The question is whether their nose is in front or not. I'll tell you what, this, this is... It looks very, very relaxed and looks like they're rowing very well. They're under so much pressure now because you don't want to make a mistake. You want to try and seize an advantage and win this race. And actually, there's a sense of desperation can start to creep in if you're not careful, thinking there's not much track left. We need to win this race. I don't want to lose. What do you do? Well, this is where it really counts. This could determine, you know, something of the future of these two uh, crews. The Shrewsbury women now see the agony, the drive, the focus and the determination on the face of Beatrice Colclough, 17 years old in the strokes. It absolutely driving her crew on, gasping for oxygen to power, to fuel those legs and those bodies. But Godolphin also go. Yeah, and that shows you actually what's really going on with this. And here Godolphin, same sort of effort is going in. The attacking is going on there. Shrewsbury, maybe they've got a slightly more efficiency here. I think they're right. I can see that Shrewsbury got a bit more power, a bit more push. Godolphin are really trying to sort of almost wheel spinning a little bit. As Shrewsbury yeah. come through the stewards enclosure, they're coming towards the line. They've got about 12, 15 strokes less. It looks like it's Shrewsbury. Amazing. They've got to three quarters of a length here out of nowhere. And really looks like Shrewsbury have they've stuck in there. It's these two crews have fought, battled really hard. And Shrewsbury just managed to maintain their form just a little bit better coming down the enclosures. It's Shrewsbury in blue, Godolphin in Latin in red and black the final strokes of the race well Shrewsbury really what an effort at the end there they took it out to almost a length over Godolphin and Latimer and that gasp for air from uh, from Beatrice in the stroke seat just gave her the extra fuel to drive that crew on Shrewsbury take down to Godolphin and Latimer in really a, an incredible age race that's epic that's that's the stuff of legends those girls are going to talk about that race forever just the courage of the Shrewsbury school just to keep the rowing and just to hold on to win by the finest of margins. I think the, the, the margin does not reflect how hard that race yeah, was. Yeah, look, although the pain was there, look at the faces straight away, absolutely delighted. And, you know, the best races to win are the close, close races. It didn't look at all certain for either crew all the way down the track, really, to the last 200 metres.